This is Asuka. It's like an open world co-op survival game, but with a twist. You're not just fending for yourself, you're also a, the fearless leader of a viking village. I seized the chance to test it out during the ongoing Steam Next Fest, and I have to say, this game has been absolutely fantastic so far. The character creator is basic, offering limited customization options. The characters are mostly pre-designed, but you can tweak details such as hairstyles, tattoos and accessories to make them your own. However, each character has unique stats. Right now you've got two choices. Asuka relies on speed and agility, while Ragnar is all about brute force and endurance. Now, word on the street is that they might be introducing some more class options, like healers and magic wielders as pre-made characters. Sounds pretty exciting, right? The world is truly incredible. You'll be able to delve into a stunning, entirely randomly generated world that is packed with hidden surprises, impressive sights, and potential dangers. The game has a procedurally generated world, so each time you play, everything will be different. The islands will be in new positions and the world will be completely different, giving you a fresh experience each time you start a new game. Essentially, it's like a brand new map every playthrough. Now, I didn't get to check out the hidden cave feature in the demo, but I heard that there will be some cool caves to explore. Sounds like a great way to find valuable resources and go on some exciting adventures. The cave system seems intriguing, as you seem to need to build an entrance before you can explore them. You'll also be able to enjoy a realistic and ever-changing weather system, where survival needs will change with seasons. Each new season adds a twist to gameplay. Some seasons are like a walk in a park for gatherers, while others are a total nightmare for farmers and hunters. Winter is like the ultimate boss level, making all the other seasons feel like warm-up rounds. The world keeps evolving with every change in weather, so you have to make sure you stay on top of your priorities. The main gameplay loop is super enjoyable. You start off by doing typical open world survival crafting tasks, but then you get to create homes for your villagers who can help out with these tasks like gathering resources and building. You get to lead your tribe to self-sustainability and glory as you put both your smarts and straight to use. I think the building system in Asuka is really cool. You get to play architect, farmer, miner and defense strategist all in one as you grow your village with housing, workshops, mines and farms and more. Every building has its own upgrades and add-ons that can make it more functional or hold more villagers. In Asuka, building doesn't offer the same level of customization as let's say Valheim. It's a straightforward process. Just place the blueprint, gather the materials and use your hammer to construct it. While there's no room for customization with the standard blueprints, the simplicity helps preventing annoying pathfinding issues for AI villagers. And there's no limit to the size of your village. So I'll take it. Even if you can't customize each individual building, you still have the freedom to create your own village layout, similar to building in a real-time strategy or city builder game. Oh, but wait, at least you can personalize the inside of the buildings, add some functional furniture and other decorative items to make it your own. Once you've finished constructing a few starter buildings in your village, it's time to create the Eye of Odin. With this magical tool, you can call upon villagers and assign them different tasks as they help grow the tribe and shape the settlement with their unique skills. Villagers can do it all, whether it's chopping wood, breaking rocks, constructing buildings, farming crops, or even protecting the village. When summoning people for your tribe, every villager brings their own sets of strengths and weaknesses to the table. Some of the villagers excel at gathering flax, while others have the strength to haul massive logs all day long. And then there are those who are just natural born fishermen. It's your job to assign everyone to their ideal roles, or as close to it as possible. For instance, why not equip the super efficient villager with a hoe and put him to work on the farm rather than giving him a sword and sending him off to a fight? It's much more productive use of his skills, don't you think? 
Also, villagers tend to improve their skills when they stay in a specific role for an extended period of time, so it might be smarter to avoid constantly changing their positions. Another cool part of the game, once you gather all your fellow vikings in the village, is getting those production lines set up. During the demo we discovered that making rope was a real hassle. I felt like it took an eternity to round up all the materials because rope was constantly in demand for construction projects. Need a tool? Rope. Need a weapon? Rope. Need a building? Rope. In fact, you pretty much need rope for everything under the sun. So once we had enough villagers, I said, buy Odin's spear to Valhalla with this. I asked some villagers to collect fiber and assign the crafting task to one of them at the crafting bench. And just like that, rope problem solved. Okay, so this isn't exactly flawless, and the AI can be a little funky sometimes. There were countless occasions when my stonemaker seemed more like a rock admirer than a rock smasher, and my warehouse worker thought it was perfectly normal to snatch raw food right off the barbecue mid-cook. But so far, things are going pretty well, and you can easily handle a few little quirks that show up along the way. It's really awesome to watch everything come together as an autonomous village. And I'm sure it's only going to get much better with further development. While your villagers are out there doing all the hard work, you'll be adventuring, fighting mythical monsters, uncovering ancient sites, and of course, trying your best not to kick the bucket. It's a survival game after all. Fighting in the game is just like your typical hack slash block and roll affair, but it actually works pretty well and makes for a fun time. I attempted to master the bow and arrow, but the slow draw time, movement hindrance and arrow drop off were quite challenging. But with dedication and practice, I'm sure you can hone your skills and become a true sharpshooter. Now, if you're as hopeless in a fight as I am, and you end up biting the dust in a battle, don't worry, your loyal villagers can also serve as a tasty soul tree to revive you. Good as new. Sending a viking to eternal darkness because I couldn't handle a fire monster may seem harsh, but they knew the risks, right? During the demo, we accidentally summoned the boss by opening some rib cages on the ground. This guy was a real tough cookie, had us jumping and ducking all over the place, but we managed to take him down in the end. As a reward, we scored a bunch of iron chunks. We couldn't melt the iron in the demo because it wasn't available. But I'm pretty sure there's some sort of system in place for advancing by defeating these boss-like enemies. I've been having an absolute blast playing the Asuka demo. And alright, maybe I did sneak a quick look at the whole game before it was officially released courtesy of the kind developers. But don't worry, I'm putting together a killer YouTube series on it. And mark your calendars for the 20th of June because it's release date. And we'll be streaming Asuka. Don't miss out on the fun. Make sure you add the game to your Steam wishlist. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Also, thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on the game. And don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more content. Or just because you like pressing buttons. Come and hang out with me on Discord or tune in to my Twitch live streams. I'm there four days a week. Thanks again for watching and have an amazing day.